Ready to go? Thank you, yes. Okay. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Callie Wagrin, and I'm with the Colorado Department of Transportation out of Boulder, Colorado. Um, um, unfortunately, Sarah is unable to join us today, but I do have her contact information at the end of the presentation. So if you do have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to her. So today I'm talking about our 2D Quick Check initiative. Um, we've had a lot of great presentations this week on 2D modeling and updates and research and applications. So I'm really excited to share with you today CDOT's experience with 2D modeling and the future of 2D modeling in Colorado. So to give you some context, uh, we refer to a 2D quick check as a back of the envelope hydraulic analysis. It takes a handful of hours and about a $5,000 investment to put a 2D model together. And it's no different than a regular 2D model. It just uses preliminary information and it's done at a scoping level in the project. And the goal is to value engineer a project. And what that means is we look for cost savings, design enhancements, um, and, and safety enhancements, material efficiencies, any opportunities that can help mitigate risk early on in the project process. And because it's so early on in the project process, there's really no impact to project schedule or scope. So this all started with Brian Varela back in um, 2016. At the time, he was our Region 4 hydraulic engineer. Region 4 is the uh, northeast corner of Colorado. And from 2016 to 2019, he discovered $14 million of actual construction savings across 27 projects that he was doing quick 2D analyses on. Um, so this really was a catalyst for the idea behind the 2D Quick Check Initiative. And he started putting together um, a research proposal and he gathered $425,000 in funding to test this hypothesis to see if we could apply 2D quick checks at a statewide level. Um, this was about 2020, and so this was about the time that I joined CDOT, um, and I was brought on to help with this initiative. And our vision for this um, research project was to create a process where CDOT design projects are value engineered to improve safety, enhance efficiency, and reduce material costs early in the project delivery workflow. So this research project could not be done without um, a great team. So there was a lot of people involved and a lot of support. Um, at CDOT, we, our state hydraulic engineer, Al Gross, was a great supporter and contributor. We also had the support from our chief engineer and our Region 4 transportation director. Uh, Scott Hogan and Laura Gerard were also um, great at giving us guidance from the Federal Highways Resource Center. They were part of our technical advisory committee and executive oversight committee. And then actually completing the 2D quick checks, we had a team of six consultants, uh, AECOM, Ayers Associates, Jacobs, Moeller Engineering, uh, Respec, and rs &H. And then on the in-house side of things, we had Brian Varela, who is now our uh, Boulder resident engineer, and Brian Campbell, who is our Region 5 hydraulic engineer, and Region 5 is the southwest uh, corner of Colorado, and then myself. And all in all, we ended up completing 46 2D quick checks um, in about the year 2021, it went a little bit over. So just to jump straight to the conclusions, um, this was a huge success. We ended up identifying $22.4 million in potential savings just by doing these quick um, back of the envelope analyses. Um, so you can see on the map up here, all the um, green dots represent uh, an area where we completed a 2D quick check. So we did explore this statewide. And the pink dots actually represent areas that we are looking to do a future 2D quick check on. So this is something that will be uh, ongoing. And there's a lot of application for, for this 2D quick checks. We had um, we had, I guess, your typical application, what you think of with hydraulics, like 
bridge, culvert design, scour countermeasure, um, floodplain permitting, um, but we also had some abstract application as well, such as signal timing devices, right-of-way environmental clearances, um, helping with construction, um, and we believe there's a lot more application and innovation um, as we continue to explore uh, 2D modeling. So just to break down uh, that $22.4 million, 81% of that was um, calculated from resiliency benefit. So our resiliency program at CDOT um, is fantastic. It's run by Lizzie Kemp and her team put together a great set of tools, including a spreadsheet that helps calculate and quantify uh, risk and resiliency for these different opportunities. Um, so that was really great that we were able to um, have that analysis on the innovations that we were looking at for the 2D quick checks. Uh, 2.8 million was actually um, um, cost saving. So what that looked like was uh, optimizing riprap or reducing structure sizes. And then we did have 6% of deferred project opportunity. And what that means is our uh, 2D quick check timeline didn't exactly line up with the uh, CDOT project that was actually going along. Um, but it was just as important because we were able to validate our 2D quick checks with the actual projects going along. So even though we left some money on the table, it was really helpful to compare our 2D quick check to the final H&H &H that was done on these projects. Um, and it was actually pretty close. Our 2D quick checks really are, are in the ballpark um, for the final H&H &H that was done on those projects, which is great. Um, we ended up um, looking at over 108 innovation opportunities. Uh, so really, a lot of these quick checks had multiple innovations and benefits, um, not just one thing from these quick checks. They really highlighted a lot of um, opportunities for us. So this is our typical uh, project process at CDOT. And usually, we don't start modeling until the 30% um, and then you work on finalizing it 60 and 90%. So the 2D quick checks really shift, is a shift in paradigm. And we actually plug in prior to scoping. And that's because that's the highest potential to save money and improve safety. Um, it's so much easier early on to incorporate innovation opportunities. Um, and even these 2D quick checks can identify fatal flaws. That's good to know early on in the project process um, to help with scope, schedule, and budget and risk. So here's a typical uh, workflow for a 2D quick check. We first identify the project or asset. We kept this pretty simple. Um, do we have a CDOT asset? Is there a water feature nearby? And is there background data available? Um, I have some more guidance later on, but that's really uh, an overview of what that first step looks like. Secondly, then we have to go out and actually get the background data. So we're really lucky in Colorado. We have um, great uh, uh, sources for information. So the, the three things that we had to gather was asbilts, topography, and hydrology. And our Colorado Water Conservation Board has put together a great portal where we can download LIDAR and get hydrology information. So we have LIDAR pretty much for the entire state. Um, I think there's still some areas that they're trying to work on. Um, and you can also pull, pull hydrology information. Um, this piece ended up being a little bit more time consuming than we first anticipated. It made up about 10% of the project process. So that's something just to keep in mind. Um, in the case that we didn't have hydrology, we would do quick um, models using WMS and HEC HMS. So then step three is actually completing the 2D analysis. We use SMS and SRH2D at CDOT. Um, I, 
on our presentation, we say it takes about one to three days to do a 2D quick check, but we've really gotten it down to about a day, just really a couple of hours and we can put a quick check together. It's really hard. I know as engineers, we're a little bit perfectionist um, and it's hard to get in the quick check mindset. Um, we we frequently had to remind ourselves, you know, is this good enough for a quick check? And really, we got it down to about a day to complete these. And then for the purpose of the research initiative, we actually had all our, our consultants complete a memo summarizing their results. And these we could actually turn over to the project managers uh, for their use and benefit. But I think moving forward, this this four step can be as simple as an email um, or even just bringing your model to a scoping meeting. So here's an actual example of a 2D quick check. This is done in Otero County in Colorado. It's close to South Park, that might be more familiar. Um, and Brian Varela and I actually did this 2D model together, and all in all, it took 90 hours to put, um, to complete it. The consultant actually working on the project tipped us off that these bridges, there's three structures along this roadway, um, might be sharing water between them. And so when we put the model together, we included all three bridges, and sure enough, um, water is being shared between those three structures um, on the highway. And so this was really, I mean, this is a perfect example of why 2D modeling is, is so informative. Um, but we were actually able to reduce some of the structure sizes. So I think the far right structure, um, we actually reduced it from a bridge to a concrete box culvert, um, and we were able to reduce the middle bridge also a little bit as well. All in all, we saved uh, just over $200,000. Um, by just doing a quick check. Here's another example. This is on Colorado 7. Uh, this project is actually our last flood recovery project from our 2013 catastrophe. And um, design was already underway when scope was added to look at a culvert along this section of South St. Vrain Creek. And so we actually negotiated with our floodplain manager in Boulder County to do a 2D model for our floodplain development permit. So uh, we put together this 2D model and we used the average water surface elevation across um, these cross sections and we ended up getting the floodplain development permit approved um, and all in all it was just less than $4,000 investment to complete, complete the model. So some other deliverables that we had uh, throughout this process is we put together a 2D quick check uh, training course that we did in-house and externally. We had a best practice spreadsheet. We put together training videos like how to download LIDAR, uh, quick, easy um, things that we could break down into five minutes. And then all the memos for the 2D quick checks were turned over to the project managers at CDOT. And uh, actually in Boulder, some of our projects um, that are actually getting to the scoping phase um, are now pulling down our 2D quick check information to incorporate, incorporate those innovations that were identified into the project. So it's really exciting um, and it's working just like we hoped it would. This slide, um, this was, Sarah was gonna talk about the uh, consultant perspective of this initiative. So again, I encourage you to reach out if, if you have any questions regarding that perspective, but I, I can still give a summary. We really had a unique team. Um, we had six consultants. We really gave everyone a lot of freedom and room to innovate. Um, and it, it was really a blended team. I think Ken mentioned it in, in his last presentation, like it, the, the synergy of the group, I like that word that he used, the synergy of the group um, was really good. We were able to share tips and tricks and we had to be a little bit of vulnerable and show our hands and show our playing cards to each other. Um, but it was really worthwhile because we came up with so many innovations and opportunities and I think the whole group really learned a lot as well. So it was almost like a peer exchange group. Um, I personally learned a lot. Um, and I, it was a really good experience and we definitely encourage blend, the use of blended teams because um, 
you know, great minds together make um, great products. And then we've also heard from our consultants that they are incorporating this uh, 2D quick check mindset into their um, company as well. So either doing 2D quick checks to help with project proposals or encouraging other clients to use 2D quick checks. Um, some other deliverables we had, we, had, we put together a GIS library of resources because we gathered so much background information um, and it really, it, it made up 10% of the, the project is, is just getting this background data. So we really wanted to make it easy for uh, others to reference this data later on and so Molar Engineering helped us put together this library that references all the data and is linked back to where this data is going to be stored. We also put together guidance. So there was a little bit of um, trial with the initiative. Sometimes we realized that a 2D quick check or 2D modeling wasn't the right tool for the job, whether it was location or maybe even the problem at hand. So we started putting together uh, guidance for internal use. Um, it's as simple as green shows yeah, this is a great tool for the job. Yellow, maybe think twice, and red doesn't mean don't use a tool, but it means really think about it. Maybe it's time to phone a friend or um, get some more information. Um, and, and I do have this in draft right now. I think it will continue to be in draft as we get more feedback from people, um, and we are still encouraging everyone to, to still reference the federal highway resources that are available out there as well. Here's some general trends that we saw from the project. So the graph up on the screen shows the consultant hours um, per the number, of, uh, the number of hours it took for the number of quick checks that they did. Um, and this is what we expected. We definitely expected there to be a learning curve. And of course, getting our mind wrapped around this different process. Is it good enough for a quick check? It's really hard to make our, um, to not make our, 2D models perfect, um, but something else that this highlights is there was there was a lot of factors that went into the hours that it took to do a quick check, not just the um, 2D capabilities. You know, the complexity of the model, so urban versus rural, gathering the background data, the accuracy of the background data. Um, so there were a lot of factors that went into the hours, but um, over the entire project, uh, it was, um, it took an average of 40 hours to complete a quick check and just under $5,000 investment. And again, that's over the entire project. As we got towards the end, we were, we were cranking out quick checks like crazy. So um, I would say it, once we got over that learning curve, it was about 10 to 30 hours to complete a quick check, which is really exciting. So the future of 2D quick checks at CDOT, since this was uh, very successful, we are trying now to uh, make this part of our project process at CDOT. And so a couple things that we're working on is putting together a statewide panel to filter 2D quick check opportunities down to our region hydraulic engineers. Um, not every project is el eligible for a 2D quick check, so how can we identify these projects early on? Um, utilizing pre-scoping meetings, that was a huge win for us. That's an ideal time to do a 2D quick check and then you, yeah, you can bring the results to the scoping meeting and that in helps inform, inform the work and the budget and risks. And then we're also developing tiers for analysis and this is where we're trying to leverage blended teams as well, but there's opportunities for in-house um, completion of 2D quick checks or using consultants and then um, a mix of both. Um, we're also continuing our training and putting together workflow videos, and then we're doing a lot of internal marketing as well. Um, it's very exciting to be here at the conference. Everyone's really excited about 2D modeling, um, and, and that's not the case everywhere. So um, we're really trying to promote this, and I think a lot of the feedback we have, we have heard is people are weary or they don't have enough time, and with the 
the advancement of the 2D modeling now, it's so easy to do a 2D quick check. So we're really trying to take this show on the road and show people the benefits and how easy and useful these tools can be. And we should be leveraging them um, to, to make our projects greater. So how can you use uh, 2D quick checks? So I definitely challenge everyone the next time that you have a new project come across your desk to try out a 2D quick check. It can help you inform right away environmental clearances. Um, it can help inform your scope of work just by gathering the background data. Um, and if anything, it just jump starts your H&H. &H, so there's really no loss. Um, just a quick a couple reminders though is remember to use the right tool for the job. Uh, 2D modeling isn't always the answer. And so just keep that in the back of your mind. And then definitely leverage pre-scoping meetings and blended teams and take advantage of free resources. There's a lot of free resources from Federal Highways and uh, National Highway Institute. And so, um, and we're happy to share out any of the information that we've learned or best practices that we've gathered. Um, so please take advantage. All right, and with that, uh, here's our contact information. I also included, uh, Brian Varela's and Brian Campbell's information as well. Brian Varela was the mastermind behind this whole initiative, and Brian Campbell was instrumental in the success of this program. So please feel free to reach out to them as well with any questions. But thank you so much for having me today. Does anyone have any questions for Kelly? Yes. We do put the structure in it, so that's why we use, um, we typically use as-built information for that and try and ground truth it a little bit in Google Earth, um, but you do have to go and finalize that once you get surveyed to, to verify those elevations and everything. Sorry, because I'm coming from different industry. you say scoping meaning, you mean DOT scoping meaning, or you're connected to FEMA? That, that's a great question. Yes, I meant DOT scoping meeting. So these... We're kind of using these more on like roadway projects. So hydraulics is all, just a piece of the puzzle, and so we do scoping meetings to include all the specialties and um, and get the project going. And so um, we're trying to get hydraulics started earlier on in that process because, um, like the slide I showed earlier, that's the optimal time to take advantage of these innovations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it really depends on the accuracy of the preliminary data that you're using. Um, we actually found that the 2D quick check was pretty similar to the final models that were actually done. That being said, um, it is an iterative process. And because it's at a scoping level, you, there's still a lot of finalization that needs to be done. You need to replace your LIDAR with actual survey information. Um, at, at a 2D quick check standpoint, we really haven't talked to, talk to our staff bridge folks yet. So there's still a lot of other people that need input. Um, so yeah, it would, it would definitely be a lower percentage complete, but I think the good news is, is we're finding that these two D quick checks are pretty close to the final and that can give us some confidence in these back of the envelope models that we're doing.